Welcome to Worksheet Cloud Grade 9 English. So happy to have joined today for the lesson. For any queries or concerns during the lesson, something that you're not sure about or you'd like some extra clarity, please would you email .com. It is on your screen. Then any questions, any queries will be seen to and extra clarity will be given if necessary. Okay, let's get started without any further ado. Hello, I am Mrs. Nortier, for those who do not know. I have been teaching grade 9 worksheet cloud English lessons for, I think this is my seventh lesson. So for those who are counting, you can correct me if I'm wrong. And please do go back and check out any other lessons if you haven't been following consistently or if you only found out now about Worksheet Cloud. Um, there's a great team of teachers. We're all really happy to be able to share our knowledge with you, especially during this time when I know you are missing your own teachers. All right, so hopefully soon you'll be able to be back in the classroom with them. But for now, I'm here for you. All right, so just a quick look today in history. So March 28th, 2011, okay, so we're talking nine years ago, Egypt's former president, Hosni Mubarak, was put under house arrest. So we don't need to feel that bad that we're in lockdown. Presidents have been under house arrest too, and that normally means they did something terrible. So we're in the clear, we're just in lockdown because we're taking time to assist the government to get the medical and personnel ready for anything that's going to come their way and just remember use this time to spend with family and to reflect and to do things that you don't normally have time for all right what you'll need for the lesson today um pen and paper i do think though that a lot of the time you can think about your answers as opposed to having to write it down but if you prefer to keep track and take some notes and also answer any activities, then please do have pen and paper ready. Please make sure that you're full of ideas and that you bring a healthy mindset today. I hope that you've had enough sleep. I hope you're not staying up late on your phone. And I hope that you're ready to tackle the lesson. All right, so today we are going to be doing punctuation. And punctuation obviously entails all different punctuation marks. There's a list of them, or a diagram rather, on the screen. We are going to be looking at not all of them, but most of them in detail. So we will be covering today the full stop, which is the end of a sentence, comma, which separates items in a sentence, on introducing a list, semicolons, which join main clauses, a question mark to show that a question has been asked, a hyphen which forms compound words, an exclamation mark used to show emotion, an apostrophe which shows either omission or possession, a dash which gives us additional information. The last three quotation mark, brackets, ellipsis. We're not going to cover those in extreme detail today. We're going to look at the most important and the most commonly used punctuation marks. All right, so just a little look at why punctuation is important, especially in your writing and especially to show where you need to give pause in your speaking. Let's have a look at this sentence. Let's eat grandma. Now, if poor grandma hears that, grandma is going to get a fright. What you meant to say was, let's eat, comma, grandma. So you're actually talking to grandma, saying, come, grandma, let's go eat. Not, grandma, we're eating you. So if you wondered, why am I doing punctuation? Well, guess what? Punctuation saves lives. Okay, just something that you have to remember. And remember this until matric, because it is very important. If you're ever asked which you will be, the function of punctuation marks. Please note you have to start with the verb when you answer the question. For instance, what is the function of a full stop? Don't just tell me end of a sentence. That's not the function. The function is 
it shows the end of a sentence. Um, what is the function of an apostrophe? Don't just say possession. It indicates possession. What is the function of a hyphen? It forms compound words. So please make sure that when you answer the questions, you're always using a correct or appropriate verb. Otherwise, it sounds very strict, and I guess it is, but you will lose that mark. So remember that forever. Punctuation, when you're telling a person or your teacher what it does, you have to then provide that verb. Okay, so top hint, please remember it. It will save your English mark. Let's break it down into different components or sections of punctuation. So today we're going to start by looking at the punctuation marks that end a sentence. Right, so we have full stop. In America, they call it the period. That's known as an Americanism, when a certain word is used only by them. Right, so we call it full stop. Then you have the question mark, and lastly, an exclamation mark. So these are the three ways that you can end a sentence. Now let's look at why they are used and how they are used. Okay, so the first one I'm looking at is the question mark. Now a question mark is used in a question sentence. What is the function? to show that a question is being asked. Let's look at some of the examples. Why are we in lockdown? It's a question. When will we go back to school? It's a question, you want an answer. Is it okay that I feel anxious? Right, so these might actually be questions you're asking on a daily basis. Why are we in lockdown? We all know. COVID-19 is a very contagious virus and we are in lockdown to try and slow the spread and help the country to get ready for the inevitable spread. Just remember that this virus, most young people don't even know they have it. It's good to ask questions and it's good to be aware. It is totally fine that you feel anxious. We all do. It is so normal right now. And when will we go back to school? Hopefully there's clarity as soon as possible. For now, we do what the government says. Yes, we may ask the questions, but we have to make sure that we're actually following responsible action. All right, so your question sentence ends in your question mark. All right, as I said, full stop. Remember, we call it a full stop. A full stop is used to end a statement sentence. A statement's being made, a fact is being produced. It really is just the basic sentence type form. Academic work each day. I'm grateful that I'm healthy. I have used this time to reflect. So three statements, all ending in full stops. And I hope that these statements are ones that you can really say you've lived through. So do what you can each day. Make sure you're getting the most out of your day, but also make sure you're relaxing. The last punctuation mark that we're looking at in terms of ending a sentence, this is an exclamation mark. These are used to end exclamation or command sentences. Now, an exclamation sentence is when I'm stating something with emotion. A command sentence, maybe some teachers use this a lot, is when I'm telling you what to do. So, let's see. I'm really excited to return to school. That's an exclamation. You're full of excitement. You just want to go back. You're putting that exclamation mark at the end. Start the video again. All right, so this could be a command being given. This could be a command or an exclamation. Let's make pizza. Um, I, I think I bring pizza into the, the lessons a lot, so I'm obviously craving pizza. All right, so those are different examples 
of both exclamation and command sentences. And as you can see, they all end with an exclamation mark. All right, so to round up, what exclamation, oh, sorry, what punctuation marks could you use to end a sentence? You can use a question mark if you're asking a question, a full stop if you're making a statement, an exclamation mark if you are exclaiming emotion or commanding something. Let's now see how you can apply that. So I've given you some examples. Again, as I've said before, either think about it or you can stop and write it down. Those two sentences in front of you, I'd like you to take a moment, see if you would give it a question mark, exclamation mark, or a full stop ending. Okay, I'll check in with you again now. All right. So sentence number one, you can see the little dog there flying. The dog flew through the air and caught the frisbee. All right, so that one you're going to put an exclamation mark. Reason being, you're putting a lot of emotion into this. Excitement, disbelief, this dog is flying through the air catching the frisbee. Okay, now we have a, a little pig wearing green wellies, Wellington boots. Why am I wearing little green wellies? Okay, these or this is a question that this pig is apparently asking. Right, so it's asking why am I wearing these wellies? Question sentence. Right, two more to go. Again, I'll give you some time or just pause the video and then we'll get going. All right, first one. The dog sat quietly in the corner watching TV. Right, this is a statement. You're observing something that's happening, so you give that a full stop. With a big, loud yawn, the cat fell into the mug. All right, so <laughs> we hope that cats aren't going around falling into mugs, but this is quite exciting or quite um, shocking that this cat has fallen into a mug. So, exclamation mark to show that emotion. All right, so I hope that you've grasped those concepts. Those are obviously our three very simple punctuation marks. Those are the three which um, are, they're very easy to grasp. Okay, let's move across now to, I wouldn't, it's not difficult, but there's just a bit more to remember about their functions. We're going to look at a comma. So here we go, a comma. We're going to look at a colon, the two dots. We're going to look at a semicolon, which is like a comma, but it has a dot above it. And then we're going to look at a dash, not to be confused with a hyphen. Right, so we're going to look at the four definitions and the functions. And then again, we'll do a little bit of an activity to make sure you've grasped it completely. Right, the first one is a comma. Now, the comma is one of the most used punctuation marks. It's also the one that I seem to see confuses people sometimes. Not, I mean, we all know what a comma is. I don't mean it like that. But just the function sometimes of where to use it. Should I rather use a semicolon? It can be a little bit tricky. Just remember that the most basic function of a comma is to provide a pause, to show a list or to show items in a list, or to separate certain thoughts. A colon, which you can see there, it's the two dots. This introduces lists, series, quotations, and explanations. So he was going to buy three things. Chairs, tables, and utensils. John wrote, I wish you a Merry Christmas. All best wishes to you. So you can see here the colon is introducing a list. Here it is introducing a quotation. It can also introduce an explanation. The semicolon, which you can see here, it is like a comma with a dot above it. Now, the A to break down what a semicolon does, it separates two complete full sentences. This one's a very good example. My daughter is a teacher. My son is a doctor. Those are two complete sentences on their own. 
so you can use a semicolon to separate it. You could also have used a full stop. You could also have used a conjunction. So a semicolon is the same in function. All right, so try and always remember that. I always tell my learners a semicolon's only function in life is to separate clauses. So give it its due and use it. A comma may never separate two full sentences. That's called a comma splice error. Okay, so just remember that a semicolon can separate the two full sentences, a comma may not. A dash. A dash can show a period of time, so 1998 to 2009, or it can show a break in the sentence or some extra information. Please call my supervisor, John Wick, on Friday. So commas could have been used there, brackets could have been used there. So that's what the dash does. It gives you that additional information. Right, let's have a look and see and test some of these examples. So here I'd like you to pause the video because there are seven full sentences and you decide if you would have used a comma or a semicolon. Right, so you can jot it down or think about it and then please pause and we'll check back. Right, so let's have a look at the answers. If I water the plants, comma, they won't die. So there I'm giving a break in the sentence. You can't say that those are two full sentences, so I can use a comma. I left the house. It was dark. Those are two full sentences, so I use a semicolon. Number three can confuse people because it seems to be showing us a list. However, have a look, it's actually giving us three full sentences. I have to walk the dog, I have to water the plants, and I have to do the dishes. So therefore, I'm using semicolons because it's full sentences. You'll always have that higher order, more challenging question. So always try and think about it when you see something that looks a little bit different. Sam, please go away. Right, there's, <laughs> I'm laughing because that's my name. Um, so there is the comma. So you're talking to Sam and telling Sam to go away. Not like what you're doing to me, hopefully. Math is hard. I prefer language arts. All right, so this is how many language teachers would feel. They'll tell you you have to um, prefer the arts to maths, but it's very possible to be both logical and creative. All right, so maths is hard, one sentence. I prefer language arts, one sentence, semicolon. Owls are nocturnal, they hunt at night. Two full sentences, so I'm separating it with a semicolon. It rained hard, but the game still went on. Right, so there I'm using a comma to show the break in the sentence. So again, as I've said to you, the easiest way to remember this is just the fact that the semicolon separates two full sentences. All right, let's see how you handle placing a colon. Remember, those are the two dots in the correct place. So read the two sentences you're given. See or think about where you would have placed that colon. Take a couple of um, seconds, even 10, 20 seconds, and then we'll go on. Right, so I hope that you were able to identify that the first colon was introducing to you a list of ingredients. I'm pretty sure we've all been baking, especially banana bread. So egg, sugar, butter, flour, chocolate chips, banana. So here my colon is introducing that. Then we've done dictionary skills. I hope you remember this. And we've also done denotation. This is all, almost like looking up the word dog in the dictionary. And then what follows? A definition or an explanation. A dog, colon, a four-legged mammal commonly kept as a pet. All right, let's have a look at the dash and then we'll move to our final two concepts. 
Right, so again, obviously you don't have to rewrite. Have a look at the sentences, the two in front of you, and try and ascertain, which means try and determine where you would have placed a dash. Pause if you need. We'll get going again. All right, so number one, the final showdown, the truth or dare game will be broadcasted live. So this truth or dare game is very much the extra information. So we didn't really need it there. The sentence could have said the final showdown will be broadcasted live, but it gives us here extra information. All right, let's look here. The greatest game ever played, the story of an underdog golfer, is the best motivational film I have ever watched. Right, so if you have a look here, the story of an underdog golfer, that is extra information. I hope you've seen this movie, it's really good. So add it to your list of movies to watch if you're stuck for something to do in lockdown. Right, so the story of an underage underdog golfer, that is the extra information. The last one we're going to, or second last concept rather, is a hyphen. Now I've kept the hyphen and the apostrophe for the end, and I'm dealing with them individually because these are the two most commonly asked punctuation marks in exams. So please, please listen carefully, turn those ears towards the screen and make sure you take in all the information. Right, so a hyphen, it forms, remember I'm using the verb, it forms a compound noun and a compound adjective. You have to decide which one you are dealing with. Right, so what I'm going to do is the following. I want you here to look and see for number one to four, where would you add your hyphen and have a look because often it's more than one place. It's more than one concept even. And I want you to tell me for number one, whichever hyphen you inserted, what does it then form? A compound noun or a compound adjective? Pause because you will need some time here. All right, so let's have a look. I'm first looking at the hyphens, then I'll come look at the functions. All right, so number one, the new manager is a 25 year old graduate. So 25 year old is one concept. We're using the hyphen to form a compound word. Right, so there are your hyphens by 20 and by five. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity that you shouldn't miss. So once in a lifetime is one concept. All right, so therefore we hyphenate. And you can see we hyphenate all there once in a. Right, number three, I hope you picked up that two of the actual words or aspects were being hyphenated. Non-members, that's one concept, are not allowed to go into the members only lounge. The semi-final, so it's one concept, for the above 18 contestants will start next week. So there you can see that hyphens are added when you are taking different words, putting it all together to give one concept. All right, in the first sentence, he is a 25 year old graduate. Because it is describing the graduate that he is, it forms a compound adjective. Number two, again, what type of opportunity is this? Once in a lifetime. It's describing, so it must be a compound adjective. Number three, there were two. The first one, we're talking about non-members. That's a noun. The second one, we're describing the lounge, members only lounge. So the first non-members was a compound noun. Members only was a compound adjective. Same follows now for sentence four. Semi-final, one concept, and we're talking about a match. It's a compound noun for the above 18 contestants. 
So above 18 is describing the contestants and therefore it is a compound adjective. All right, so just remember hyphens will always form either a compound noun or a compound adjective. All right, let's wrap it up with the apostrophe. Now, an apostrophe has two functions. It can either be used to show possession. So this is if I'm saying that it's ownership of something. Or it can be used to show omission in a contraction. Now, this is when you take two words and you put them together. Like, for instance, do not becomes don't. Now, I'm going to test how much of that you know on your own. So here are your examples. I want you to take a moment again. You're going to press pause. Show me where you would have put the actual apostrophe and also tell me what those omitted or omissions would be in full. All right, so pause the video. Okay, so let's have a look. Won't is will not and the apostrophe goes just before the T. He'd, he would, the apostrophe goes just before the D. It's, it is, our apostrophe is there just before the S. Might have, is might have, apostrophe just before the VE. You'll notice that the apostrophe is always placed where you've dropped the letter. So we've dropped I, so I need to go put an apostrophe. We've dropped HA, so I need to go put an apostrophe. All right, you're, you are, we're taking away the A, so we're putting in an apostrophe. Didn't, did not, we're taking away the O, so we've placed an apostrophe. We're, we are, I've taken away the A, so I make sure there's an apostrophe. So all of these apostrophes are showing omission. Omission means what has been omitted, what has been left out. So it shows us the omission and then forms the contraction. All right, so hyphen and apostrophe, most important punctuation marks. They're like the BMW and Mercedes Benz of punctuation marks. So always just remember those two functions. Okay, to end with a little bit of humor, here's the cartoon where an exclamation mark is speaking to a question mark and he says, I'll never date another apostrophe. The last one was too possessive. Then here's a kind of superhero. He sees that this person is putting an apostrophe where it shouldn't go. So he says, I'll have that chalk, thank you. The apostrophe man really needs to brush up on his other punctuation skills because he really should have put a comma there and a full stop at the end. Anyway, then I'm sure you guys like to laugh at English teachers. The games get pretty crazy at English teachers parties. So you've all heard of pin the tail or pin the tail on the donkey. So here's pin the apostrophe. And here we have a colon and a comma talking to a full stop and an exclamation mark, which we know are the ends of sentences. You two are so cute. I love how you finish each other's sentences. Right, so punctuation, we saw earlier on with the grandma example, it saves lives. And we're seeing here it adds humor. Guys, I hope that you're excited and you are motivated. I know a lot of us might be losing our motivation right now because everything just feels so uncertain. But keep that love of learning, keep it strong, because it really is going to help you through. Thanks so much for listening today. Um, I hope that you had a wonderful long weekend and great news. If you don't know already, there's another one coming up. So thank you very much. I hope that you were able to take a lot from this lesson. Thanks for watching Grade Nights. This lesson was brought to you by Worksheet Cloud. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Stay strong, have a lovely day, and catch you on the other side.